everybody, welcome back to Dusty Coloring. If you're new, welcome. Today's video is going to be a little bit different um, video. I decided to do a color and chat with you guys. Um, I talk to a lot of you sporadically um, on Instagram over the years. When, you know, and some people, some will reach out if I post something and they'll be like, oh, that's so pretty, what did you use? You know, cause I don't put everything in my descriptions on Instagram. So, you know, just talking and over the years, people have asked me questions and, you know, I've accumulated them in my brain. So I thought, what better way? I'll do a color and chat with you guys. I'll answer one or two of the questions while I color. Give you some long winded answers to one or two questions and color with you guys. So if you're not into talking videos, I can tell you right now, this is not going to be for you. If you're into more of color tutorial videos, this is not going to be for you. I do not, I'm not planning to do a tutorial. If I ever was, I would just put it on silent or to music. Um, this is gonna be more me just coloring in this country to be book by Alexander Francis um, with my Uhuhu alcohol markers. And I'll sporadically interrupt my story time to tell you guys what I'm doing. Um, but for the most part, it's going to be more of a color and chat. So if that is your kind of video and that is something you would be interested in, then please stay around, stick around, enjoy, grab whatever you want to grab to get cozy or comfy in bed if it's you're uh, trying to wind down for the night. And I'll thank you again for being here. Now, um, first things first, I'm just going to tell you what I'm using to color in this book. I'm going to be using um, a color palette from volume two of Sarah Renee Clark's Color Cube. And I've picked out this one, which is number 410. Now, a lot of people just use the one color. Um, the color cube gives you like three variants and then you get a picture where it's used and then you get the main colors here. Um, some people just use the main colors. I, depending on what I'm coloring, if it's a, um, a mandala, I'll use just the single colors. If it's an actual picture, sometimes to give myself more of a range, I'll use like each of the colors within the gradient, um, the dark, medium, and light, because sometimes they could be very different colors, but they still all kind of go together. It gives me more of a range. So I'm gonna be going with that for this image that I've picked. Um, I'm using my Ohuhu Fine Tip and Chisel Tip Markers. I have the 320 set. Now I prefer the brush tip and I do have almost a complete set of the brush tip which I did not purchase in one I purchased like the individual sets and got myself almost all the colors that way and I love those but they're in an actual marker stand um a couple of marker stands on my desk and my desk is a mess and I can't film on my desk so filming on the table, dining room table, and the lighting is gonna give some shadows here and there. However, since it's not a tutorial and it's more of a color and chat, I'm going to apologize for it, but I'm not gonna make myself go crazy to um, set up lighting and stuff for it. So I do apologize for the shadowing. Um, my Ohuhu, I 320 set, I keep them, the fine tip one, they're in the pack it came in. And I just used the Ohuhu swatch charts that it came with. I filled them in and I'm just gonna be using, picking out colors and pulling them out of the case, which is off screen because it's too large. Now, the I've started coloring a little bit and then I decided, you know what, let me jump on and let me do a color and chat with you guys. For those who are always asking me questions about myself, I thought this would be great. So I have you guys zoomed down a little bit just so you could see a little bit of what I'm doing. Um, I picked out the lemonade stand. Um, I'm not gonna raise you guys back up right now, only because it's kind of like shaky and makes you dizzy. So I'm just gonna leave it like this so you guys can see how I'm coloring. And then at the end, I'll bring it up so you can see the whole picture. Um, what I've done so far is I've grabbed, where's my little palette? I pretty much grabbed some like colors um, all throughout the yellows and I started with that. Um, and then I grabbed like, it's an orange, but I made it, I grabbed a browner color as you can see. So I grabbed, I did the sack, the lemon sack. Um, I did the lemons, I did the lemonade. I made it kind of, I used this color in there um, for a little bit of shadowing and to make it like an Arnold Palma. 
for those who aren't familiar with an, what an Arnold Palmer drink is, it's pretty much lemonade and iced tea mixed together. And many places you can get it spiked with alcohol. So, but I happen to just like it regular. Um, I just find it refreshing because I love iced tea and I like lemonade and then it's like the best of both worlds. And then for the greens, I just grabbed, oops, sorry, some greens. They're not exactly as greeny as yeah, these are like I find like these are darker um so I went with some lighter variant and then I may go over later with pencil to bring it up but I'd rather go lighter and bring it up with pencil than go too dark and have to lighten it with pencil because I don't always love how that looks um yeah so we're gonna finish doing the slats right now and um one of the questions I'm going to answer which is kind of a long answer actually is what are my crafting hobbies and how I got into coloring. So we're gonna do that. Now I'm just gonna ping pong between the darker the shades. Um, for those of you who wanna know what colors I'm using, um, I will list it in the description below. And I'm just gonna ping pong back and forth however I feel fit till I get the color I want within the three greens and chat with you guys. So let's get started. Um, I just wanna say hello again and thank you all for stopping by and hanging out and again if this isn't your kind of video i just want to thank you guys for even coming to check me out um there's some other videos you might like just pretty much completed pages and coloring hauls and coloring plan videos um you're more than welcome to check those out and thank you again all right so let's get into my crafting hobbies so I enjoy doing crafts and things like that. Um, I like to organize things. I like making journals and books and over and over and over again because I just like the creative process more than I like the maintaining process. It just kind of makes me happy, like making spreadsheets of things and stuff like that. Organizing, I love all that kind of stuff. So um, those are just some things that I enjoy doing. But as far as crafting goes, um, I'm not like an artist. I can't draw. Um, I do love to write. Um, I got some silly little books saved that I've written, you know, not doing anything with them because I don't know how or what to do with them. Um, but as far as crafting hobbies go, um, I've always had something going on that I enjoy doing. Um, and for the most part, um, I used to do my first real crafting hobby where I spent tons of money buying supplies was scrapbooking. Um, back in the early 2000, um, like 2000, I don't know, maybe even late 90s to mid 2000s. I know I'm dating myself now. Um, there really weren't any smartphones. And if you wanted to take pictures you would you know take your little disposable camera kodak disposable camera i know right some of you who may be younger may be like wait what are you kidding but yes you would take your little disposable camera which came out um i used to take my actual regular little canon ca pocket camera that came out those were really big they were kind of taking cameras and making them smaller so they could fit in your pocket kind of like the evolution of cell phones how they went from huge cell phones to thin cell phones that could fit in your pockets they did the same thing with cameras so i would take out my canon little camera that i would stick in my pocket which was digital and i would take pictures with that or i would before that came out i would take my little disposable kodak camera take pictures when I went out with my friends and then bring them to the local CVS pharmacy or whatever pharmacy had camera, de you know, film developing. And I'd have all these pictures and I would take just hours and hours and make scrapbooks. And it, you know, I'm glad I did that because I have some really great pictures and really great memories. You know, in a time where having your phone camera on you at all times wasn't really a thing and um, if I wasn't such a pain in the ass with taking photographs which back then people wanted to shoot me but now everyone wants to see pictures um, I would have missed out on a lot of things so I'm kind of glad that I did all that uh, so I would just do scrapbooks and I had everything I had a desk with all the paper towers um, and I would have tons of construction paper, cardstock of all sizes. 
stickers. I can't even tell you how many stickers I had of just letters and images and just like so much stamps to, you know, stamp out words and descriptions. And guys, I, it was, I put a lot of money into that hobby. Um, and I, la it lasted a, quite a, a while. I did it for years. Um, but you know, life changed and my circumstances in my life changed and it's, I'm not going to get into all that kind of stuff, but I just, a lot of books I had made, I just didn't want to look at anymore. Um, or I had to kind of disassemble a little bit. Um, and then I just was like, I just don't want to do this anymore. Like, I don't know, I, some things bum me out. So I stopped scrapbooking. However, the digital age came about and you can pretty much do the same thing. It, it, online like it scrapbooking is a hobby in itself I just didn't have the money anymore to keep up with it or the desire to keep up with it so I stopped buying things to you know fuel the hobby but then there were websites like Shutterfly where you can actually upload your pictures and make your own scrapbooks and they have like themed digital books and I found a lot of fun in doing that um over the past couple of years uh Many years after my scrapbooking, scrapbooking, this is my scrapbooking forte. Um, but I actually, when I was married, when I got married, I made my own wedding album that way. Um, I had just had my photographer because I had a videographer and I ha and um, a photographer taking some regular shots and then just a lot of candid shots throughout the night. And they gave me the flash drive for that. And I just made my own photo album. I ordered the prints that I wanted from them and then I just made my own wedding album for myself and my husband and then I made some family al wedding albums for like um, my parents, his parents, his siblings who wanted them. And then if I have a friend who, I don't know, has a baby or gets married or has a wedding shower or a baby shower or a milestone birthday party um, and I take pictures, I'll collect pictures from other people and I'll make them an album as a gift so it hasn't totally left me but I don't it's no longer my main crafting hobby um after that uh what did I start to do I started writing um and then that was before all the digital age of self-publishing um so I just found that it was impossible to do anything as far as writing goes, um, and I stopped doing that. So I have a lot of stories unedited, unfinished, and yeah, I know people are now like, oh, why don't you, I don't know, self-publish, but it's, 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 I don't know. I find it's, it just hurts my head, all of that, and I, I, do, I don't know. There's a lot of people steal stories and steal things, and you know, when you put so much effort into something, and then you're just gonna do it yourself and not know legal this and that. It would just crush me if someone stole something that I, you know, created for in my brain. Um, and that may sound silly and that may sound like a cop out, but it again is not my major hobby anymore. So um, after that, I went into diamond painting. Now diamond painting is huge now, but back then it was not. Um, you would find diamond paintings here and there on Amazon and um it wasn't all the rage I don't there was no diamond art club back then or those websites that actually catered to that it, it was pretty much Amazon or bus like you would just find something on Amazon and usually they were images now I realize they were probably stolen images when I say stolen I mean there was probably like um if you paint by number there's a couple of like paint works and dimension paint by numbers, which I was really big into paint by number too, guys. That was another habit. We'll get into that in a second. But I noticed a lot of the diamond paintings were copies of those. But they were so little known about the diamond painting back then. I had no idea, you know, that it was probably just someone making it off of someone else's artwork. Um, now it's just like more legit. But I did diamond paint. I did enjoy that. However, it did not keep my interest for the one reason that I've always had a pet and they've always you know at the time of diamond painting it was a cat cats and there really is 
they like to lay and get on everything and get into everything. And there was really just no place for me to leave the diamond painting out. Um, so to do the project, I'd have to put it away. Then I'd have to take it out, set everything up. And I don't know, I'm more of a fly by my pants when it comes to crafting. I don't want to have to sit there and set up and then craft. Um, by the time I finished setting everything up, I kind of like lost interest. <laughs> I know, typical me. Um, so as much as I enjoy it, um, I, I didn't do it. It didn't last. It didn't hold my interest like as much as, as long as scrapbooking did or any of that. Um, I am coming back into diamond painting, but more for like a purpose, like um, because there's diamond paintings I want to hang up, so I want to finish them to hang up. So when I purchase diamond paintings, I I purchase them with a the purpose. It's not just more of like a hobby to collect them and have a stash of them. Um, I actually did that with puzzles. Um, I was during COVID, I became a huge puzzler, um, and I had just been collecting them to collect them like people like we collect coloring books now um i was collecting puzzles i have i can't even tell you how many puzzles i have um and i didn't lose interest in doing them but it's again one of those things you have to set up i found ways to make it work um for those of you who do like to puzzle or do puzzles i know they have puzzle stands out there which i'm sure you're all familiar with um but if you're not into puzzles and you only like to do them here and there and you don't want to purchase a puzzle easel or something like that, you can buy a bulletin board. Um, and that's what I did because I didn't have room in my apartment because I lived in an apartment when I was into my puzzling phase. Um, I didn't have really room to set up an easel or put a puzzle a st or somewhere to store even a, a, like a laptop kind of puzzle thing. Um, so I would get a bulletin board and I would do my puzzle on the bulletin board and I would stuff the bulletin board under my bed, slide it under my bed or on top of a bookshelf or a dresser. And then when I wanted to do my puzzle, it kind of had a little bit of a lip. So it kind of kept it from sliding off. Um, and I had the huge bulletin board cause I was doing like, I had a thousand, some thousand piece puzzles, but they just, oh my gosh, I don't have the, attention span for those so I was sticking within 500 to 750 so I had the um, bulletin board that would fit that size puzzle and then I would glue them um, when I was done I would slide and once they were glued it was glued um, I would slide oak tag under it and then lift it off of the bulletin board that way and frame it so I have a couple of puzzles that I frame because then I started collecting uh, puzzles that I wanted to frame. For instance, um, if some of you may know, there's a brand of puzzles um, called Dowdle folk, folk Art, and I'll put the name in the description. And they have a lot of state, U.S. state themed puzzles and themed puzzles. So um, I used to travel um, back before I had responsibilities. <laughs> Um, I used to do, I used to travel and I did get to see a lot of places. So I'm happy I did all that before I, you know, life took over. Um, so I would collect puzzles with places I had been. Um, like I had gone on an Alaskan cruise. Um, so I collected, uh, one of the Alaska puzzles. I think it was Ketchikan. Um, I lived in Brooklyn, so I did a Coney Island puzzle that they had from Dowdle and I framed it and it's hanging on my wall. And then for my honeymoon, my husband and I had gone to Maui. Um, we went to Hawaii and one of the stops was Maui. And I have um, a Maui puzzle hanging on my wall. So like I would do them, glue them, and now they're hanging in my hallway. Um, and there's a couple other ones I want to do um, and hang up. So... I'm still into puzzles, but uh, not. I don't collect them anymore unless I see something. I you know, old habits die hard. If I'm browsing and I see a puzzle that I just have to have, I, I will get it. But I haven't done that in a while. After puzzling, oh, I told you guys this craft thing was going to take a while. Um, I'm and I'm just still just 
going through here. I mean, I need to smooth them out a little bit, but again, I'll do that with pencil. Um, what was after puzzling? After puzzling, I did ceramics. I started collecting ceramics. I would go online to ceramic warehouses and I would purchase ceramic Santa Claus. Um, they have these themed Santa Clauses. Um, if you're into ceramics, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're not into ceramics, they have themed Santa Clauses. They're called Gare. I believe G-A-R-E Santa Clauses. And they're themed Santa Claus. Santa Clauses. Um, sometimes they have them by state. I did a New York Santa Claus. He was holding a sack and in his um, sack where toys would be was uh, Empire State Building, a taxi cab, and he was holding an apple in his hand, like for the big apple. And then in the sack was, I believe, a Statue of Liberty, the Brooklyn Bridge. So I did that Santa Claus and I gave it to my friend. So those were the type of ceramics that there were and I can't even tell you what websites I use because I haven't purchased any in about three years but I have bins filled um with them and any kind of Halloween ceramic because I love Halloween so pumpkins and little Frankensteins and stuff like that I would do and use them as decorations the reason I stopped doing them was because I lived in an apartment and it looked like ceramic Santa Claus just threw up in my apartment. They were just everywhere and I didn't have places to put things anymore. So I was like, when I get a home, a big house or a house, um, I'll start doing the ceramics again because then I could, I have places for everything from when we decorate. So I do have my house now um, and I haven't decorated yet because we've just been fixing up stuff. So I don't know, maybe I will get into that um, again at some point. But for now, um, I just, I haven't unpacked them. They're all wrapped up nice and tight. And they're all taking a nap in a bin in my basement for now. Um, but those are a lot of fun to do. And that's why I have a huge acrylic paint um, collection. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to gradient that way instead of going up and down. Um, yeah, so that's why I have so much acrylic paint. Because I would dry brush them, which is another way to ceramic paint you basically paint your ceramic a color like a white base a I, I my painted base of choice was a black base so you'd paint the whole ceramic black with black acrylic paint and then you would put your colors on a palette and you would take a dry brush and you would dip it into the color dip it onto a napkin and paint your ceramic that way so I had tons and tons of ceramic um, acrylic paint. So, yeah. But then I stopped doing that. And then after that, I got into coloring. Um, I always liked to color. Um, it was always something I enjoyed doing. When I was little, I used to beg my mom to draw me fish. Just so I can color them in different colors. And I had no idea there was an adult community of coloring. And once I found out there were adult coloring books, I just... Never look back. I've been doing it since. We're on year three now of coloring, and it is probably one of the only hobbies that I've ever done that out of all the ones I've mentioned that I have not gotten tired of or I do not find it an effort to do. There's no setup. There's no prep. There's no cleanup. It's just, the for me, it is just one of the most relaxing hobbies for that reason that when I'm stressed or having a bad day or want to unwind or just do something that I enjoy, I just reach out, I, I grab a coloring book, I grab my markers, and I just color. And it's just clean up is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> and I just, I love it so much. Um, yeah, so I don't think... I'm ever going to really tired of it, tire of it. And the only thing I find myself doing in between is maybe making, because I told you guys, um, I think I mentioned it in the beginning of the video, I like to organize and I like to create things. Like, like I said, I like to do journals. I did try journaling, but it wasn't for me. Um, 
but I will make my coloring journal or I'll make a, I'll sit there and I will log every single coloring book I have and then keep track and then in three months decide I want to do it a different way. And I know some people are like, that's crazy. And some of you may be like, you have problems. But to be honest, that's just another form of relaxation for me. Um, it's because I kind of, it's kind of like when you put on a movie you've seen a thousand times just for background noise, it's comfort noise. It's like, all right, I know by now what's in this book of coloring books that I'm doing up. Um, but it's just therapeutic. It's just writing and again, no muss, no fuss. And sometimes I just need that. So those are my hobbies. So yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up this uh, portion here. And then I'm going to come back and we'll tackle another portion just because I need to, I was on my break for work. So I need to go back to work for a little bit and then I will come back when I am done with work and we will finish coloring and chatting and I'll know I'll be gone a couple hours, but you guys will only see me gone for like a second. All right, guys, I'll see you in a sec. All right, everybody, I'm back. So as you can see, I did a little bit more. But I kept within the colors. So I brought the green that we were doing, I was doing with you guys down here, up into here. I combined all the yellows into the awning and then I added one extra color. I went in and I grabbed uh, Shallow Earth, which is still along the lines of these colors, but kind of a little bit more into the darker orangish color. So I combined that just to give the wood railing here and here, just a little bit of a, a you know, a different color than the yellows. And I kind of just did this sloppily, so it kind of has like a grainy kind of look. Now we're gonna do, I'm gonna do her dress. And for that, I'm gonna do within the blues. So I picked out just two blues and then I can alter with pencil if I want. I'm gonna use Antwerp blue and light blue which is kind of along the lines of this darker blue. And then right here, I'm kind of omitting the middle shade. That I can go in with pencil, or depending on how it lays out, the lighter shade will become the middle shade and the pencil will become the lighter shade. So I'm going to do the light first. Now, okay, so we, to sum up the question, um, the question that I was asked that I answered about my crafting and what's my, what crafts I do and what was my favorite craft. So those are all the crafts that I've done. And my most favorite is coloring. Um, that's the one that seems to be going strong. So that is the one that has seems to be winning out. It's why I created a channel. It's just, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy watching it. And I had no idea, you know, there was such a community. So um, another question that I get is, uh, what are my favorite coloring books, you know, um, and what coloring book made me want to color? So I had, like I said, I had no idea about the coloring community. I just wanted coloring books. I just wanted to color and I was actually getting children's coloring books and coloring with those. And then a friend of mine who's all always up into everything, like she is just into as much crafts as I am. And she follows people all over the place, you know, and, and gets ideas for stuff ideas for stuff she had mentioned to me hey did you know that there's um adult coloring books out there and I was like no I had no idea that there were adult coloring books so she was the one who actually told me about you know what's out there and then I just started searching on google amazon for adult coloring books and you know a lot of Johanna Basford books were coming up and I think a lot of people who started coloring started coloring with Johanna Basford books so I grabbed um, some of her first ones, Enchanted. Now, I'm probably going to get the names right because as much as I love her, I, I'm not a lover lover of the um, her older books. So which the Forest one, um, that one was my favorite. Um, and then I just started collecting them as they started coming out. Um, whichever one started coming out, those were the ones that I, I started to collect. And I would color in those and... The first set of pencils I had, believe it or not, were actually polychromos, um, but I had a little 
a small, small set of polychromos, and I would use those. And then I um, also had a larger set of the, um, are they the stay litters? I can't really remember. Um, I had a set of those. Uh, and I would color with those and I would color in her books with fine liners. So I wasn't really, I didn't really know much about blending, coloring and all that kind of stuff right off, like right out the gate. Um, but her books were the first books. And then I started, ex you know, expanding a little bit and getting into other books. And I can't recall. Um, okay, I want to say maybe when I started really going back into, into coloring, um, which was probably, I want to say in 2021, I started with Jade Summer Books. And I was a big fan of Jade Summer Books. Um, and I grabbed a bunch of those. And Chibi Girl Hara was my favorite. Now, I wasn't into alcohol markers yet. Um, I didn't really know much about alcohol markers. It was just pencils. And by then I already had established, I had gotten my Prismacolor pencils because I really was just rocking the Johanna Basford books, even though I didn't know any better. I didn't know that I didn't love them because um, that was all I knew. And that's really where I was practicing and getting my techniques and figuring stuff out. And then I started coming up on pencils and this and that. So once I really dove into coloring, um, I started branching out of from Johanna Basford and got into the Amazon world of coloring books. And that's when I grabbed my Jade Summer and my Chibi Girl Horror was one of my favorites. Um, I have that one. And then I grabbed some other Jade Summer books. Uh, what else did I dive into? Um, I started with Hannah Lynn as well. Now I started looking up videos and watching people. So I did see some Kirby Rosanes on there and I did grab my first copy of Mythomorphia back in the beginning of my coloring journey. And that's when I started realizing there were other mediums aside from colored pencils. There were markers and paints and all these things. And then it really just kept snowballing from there. Like when I would Google things and search things, I'd fall down rabbit holes of, you know, markers or this or YouTube videos of people coloring with acrylic paints or coloring with markers or coloring with, um, I don't know, different kinds of pencils. So that was kind of another way that I had gotten into everything. And then Hannah Lee and I found all of her stuff. Um, but I really didn't own markers for a while. And a lot of my earlier colorings in these books, which Amazon paper, as we know, can be unforgiving with certain pencils. And I did not have a huge pencil collection at the time. And I wasn't very, I was still trying to figure out my style. So I didn't. I wasn't coloring great in these books. Um, and in my first Mythomorphia book, it was really a lot of practice stuff. There were some pages that I was really proud of how they came out, um, but nothing the way I color now. Not that I'm coloring a ton better. It's just I use kind of different method methods now and different mediums. And it kind of just enhances the page a little bit, even if I'm not the best colorist or the best of, you know, something I, I'm just using more and trying to figure out more so um, my favorite coloring books I'm going to say that have stuck from the beginning of the journey are actually my Mythomorphia books believe it or not Mythomorphia Mythomorphia for one and then Fragile World and World Within Worlds but um, Mythomorphia has been from the from the get-go my favorite and I do enjoy Hannah Lynn books. Um, I like her newer stuff better than her older stuff where it's just a lot of um, face and portraits. Uh, Steampunk Darlings was something I was trying to complete. Um, back in the beginning of my journey, um, I was just completing the book page by page in order. And then believe it or not, I um, Kirby Rosane's new, new book came out. And I think, what was it at the time? I think it might've been Mythic World. Um, and then I just started doing myth coloring in mythic world. So I abandoned that, but, uh, favorite coloring books, you know, it kind of fluctuates with how my style it is for that time period. But 
I can say hands down, Mythomorphia has always been one of my favorites, and I am doing a color, I am coloring in that book. It is on my list of books to complete eventually, and I've been coloring a page a month so far. Um, it is only April, but I have managed to keep on track with that. I've colored four pages already. I think five. I think in January I did two. Um, uh, Chibi Girl Horror is still one of my favorite Jade Summer books. Without a doubt, that is one that I am coloring, I'm diehard coloring in. Um, so those two, I'm going to say, are my favorites, not because they're my favorites, but because they're the ones that I started at the beginning of my coloring journey with and about the only two that managed to hold such interest for me through now, three years later. I'm still a huge fan of those two books and I've gravitated into other illustrators and I've got other favorites, but I'm going to say those are my two of my two favorite all-time books because I have not lost interest in them on how much I like them since I started coloring and my style has changed. So books that I did like, like last year or two years ago, I no longer really like like them anymore. So those two I'm gonna say are my favorite. So I'm actually kind of shocked that I was able to narrow it down to two books. <laughs> um, I thought that was gonna be a lot harder for me to answer. Um, you know, there are books I am totally enjoying right now. I am enjoying the new, um, the teddy bear book by Diane DeFore, and I am loving Aries' new literature book. Um, uh, but as for favorites, those two, they're still going strong after three years. So that was actually easier to answer than I actually thought. <laughs> Look at that. So, um, yeah. And while I did that, I was able to um, color in her dress and her hair, I mean her bandana. This is just a colorless blender and I don't usually ever use these for markers. Um, it's even a little dry, but I just wanted to try and soften up those lines a little bit. Usually I use my colorless blenders for everything else except for alcohol markers. I use them a lot for my water-based pencils, believe it or not. All right, so that was question number two that I got asked a lot was my favorite coloring books. Now, you know, I, am, I will put these questions that I'm answering that I've collected over the years from, pe from people, you know, I've spoken through, through, like I said, message, messenger and stuff like that. Um, and if any of my coloring friends are out there or you have a YouTube channel or whatever and you want to answer these questions, please, please take them and answer them. I would love to hear the answers to these questions. Um, love to hear you guys answer them as well. I mean, because just like people were curious about me, I'm curious about all of you. So, you know, if you want to take the questions, you can. Um, yeah, so those were the two questions so far was coloring. I got to write them down now because, you know, I have them in my brain. Uh, craft and... The books. Okay. What other question do I get asked? Um, I get asked, do I, uh, what else? let me think, let me think, um, because I'm trying to pick out another color now, so I can't do two things at once. Okay. So let me pick out another color first, and then I'll come back with the other question that I'm going to be answering. Give me two seconds, guys. All right. I've picked out some colors for her hair. So I was looking at like the oranges and the reds. And then, believe it or not, I found two colors in the brown section of the swatch chart that kind of are along the lines of these colors. So I'm going to go in with the brown and the terracotta because I already know which Prismacolor pencils can darken it if I really want to make it darker or lighter. So I pulled out my brick brown and my brown. So we're going to go in with the lighter one, which is the brown. Um, another question uh, that I was asked, because I did post some completed page videos where I had done one or two split colorings with my husband. So I was, you know, talked about those pages a little bit. Um, and then I was asked, you know, do, 
does he, do we craft together? And the answer here is no. Um, he actually does not have a lot of hobbies like I have. Um, he is not a hobbyist in any way. Um, his hobby that he does enjoy is he does enjoy gaming. So I guess you can call that kind of a hobby. Um, but he's more of a gamer. And that takes up, you know, in those intri intricate games with the headphones and interacting with other people. So he, um, he does a lot of that. So, no, we do not have hobbies together and actually him and I are kind of like polar opposites with <laughs> with everything like I like to read he doesn't like to read um, I like to watch movies he doesn't like to watch movies um, very rarely will he sit down and watch TV or watch a movie um, he likes more of TV shows like Shark Tank and um, I don't know stuff like that more I want to say reality TV believe it or not and I don't like any of that stuff um, I'm more of a geeky kind of tv watcher like i like discovery channel and i like documentaries um he does like murder documentaries though and mystery documentaries that we do share in common and i also like to just put on as you can from what i said before i have gilligan's island on in the background i just like to put on things i've seen and watch them over and over um whether it be while i'm coloring or while i'm i don't know organizing journaling something or just sitting down to unwind I'd rather watch something I've already seen so that I don't have to fully concentrate on it and I just enjoy it that way so yeah no we do not share hobbies together and it was nice those couple of times I got him to actually split color with me um yeah he has tried to get me to play some video games and I used to love video games um but they're, the gra graphics have gotten so much better, obviously, and they're like so lifelike, but I get very dizzy when some of the things you kind of feel like you're like right in the middle of it and the screen is like pivoting left and pivoting right or your character standing still, but the screen like is moving around you at all angles to look at. I get dizzy because um, I do get motion sick and I can't concentrate and I'm not very good at those types of video games. And that's like the newer ones that are on like that were on like Nintendo Wii when they came out or on those kind of gaming stations. Um, yeah, even his World of Warcraft that he plays, it's a lot going on for me. Um, it's like I like them, but I, I'm not able to play them. So there aren't many games that I do play, but we did have the Nintendo Wii. And, you know, we did play some of the bowling games and the Mario Kart. And sometimes you can get some older Mario Brother games, which I love. Um, so I'm more of a simple video game person, um, than these really cool games that are out now, which I think are really cool. I just, unfortunately, like I'm not able to play them. Um, yeah. So there's that question. Um, uh, do I, how about friends? I was asked that too. Um, you know, um, my one friend, she is into crafting as much as I am and her craft mood um, fluctuates like my mood. Um, she was diamond painting hardcore for a while and then she was like, I need a break because she was like so addicted to it and loved it so much. Now she's actually into coloring. She was drawing for a little while and she actually realized she actually is quite a good artist. Like she can draw. Um, but now she's into coloring too. So it's so funny. I've been doing this for three years and she just started doing it and she'll be like, oh, I found this coloring book and someone's talking about it. I'm like, I have it. <laughs> and she's like, what? And actually, she was one of the persons when I did my um, uncluttering of my coloring books that um, took a lot of coloring books. Uh, yeah, so, but we don't color together. We don't get together to color. Um, unfortunately, we have like, you know, work and the, it's just hard. When we do get together, um, we do go to the same hairdresser. So that is our outing together. We do that once every two months. We get our hair colored and cut. Um, and it's like, because it's two of us, we're there for like four hours because, you know, we're getting colors and highlights and cuts, but it's nice because that's, we catch up and we'll grab something to eat. But no, I don't craft with anyone. I just kind of craft with myself and with you fine people who are watching. Um, I remember I posted, um, when I was posting the giveaway videos, Someone asked where I was located because um, 
times and this and that. And I am actually I'm located in the States, in the United States. And I am on the East Coast in the tri-state area, New York area. Which I know most of you picked up from my accent, which there is no hiding. Um, and I did mention before with the puzzles that I lived near Coney Island. I had lived near Coney Island, so I did a Coney Island puzzle and hung it up. Um, yeah, so on the East Coast. Um, I was, uh, what else was I asked? I'm trying to think. So yeah, I live in the East Coast area. Um, pets. I was asked about pets because a couple of times my cat made a little appearance on the channel while I was coloring and then, you know, people would message me and say that they have that kind of cat or because she's a Maine Coon or, oh, is that a Maine Coon? I love Maine Coons. Where did you get her? You know, that again, where, where are you located? Because, you know, that that is an actual interesting story about my cat, which I can go into very quickly. Um, my cat actually, um, I've always had pets, and when I, I had three cats and a dog, a dachshund, and my dog, um, they were older, so by the time I met my husband, they were all um, in double digits, 10, 11, and 12. Um, I had one cat who was six, but she had asthma, so around the time I met my husband, um, after years of treating her asthma, she passed. Um, so then my other cats and my dog, they were in double digits. So they were all up there and, um, right around the time I was, met my husband and we were going to move in together, you know, we decided we were going to live together. Um, my animals, uh, started to get sick. I'm um, sickly. Uh, my dog developed bladder stones. Um, and I did, uh, pay to have him have the surgery, which, um, is successful in dog and you know other cases um that is why i did proceed with it but i believe my dog also had um cancer um which i think they tried to tell me about because he had a large large he was a full-size dachshund because i know there's many ones and he had about a cantaloupe uh if you ever, a mango, mango size um, mass on his side. And I think they were trying to tell me before I did the surgery that, you know, um, that's probably cancer and, you know, it may affect the outcome of his recovery. But, you know, we didn't do any testing on it and the dog was in pain from not being able to urinate. So I... Um, I just told him to do the surgery, um, and they did. And he never really recovered from it, unfortunately. Um, I had taken him to an emergency, um, a local emergency um, clinic, and they did the surgery there. Um, and then my normal um, doctor, um, veterinarian, uh, said um, that there's, he doesn't have a lot of blood in his body, um, something with you can tell um, by the gums, and that something was taking it, and it was probably the mass, the tumor. Um, so my dog came home in May from his surgery, late May, and sadly, um, I had to put him down, um, which broke my heart, um, in july of that year um because then he started having seizures and whatnot and then right after he passed away um my cat one of my cats had a mass on his bladder um and it was starting to affect him and his quality of life went down so he had to be put to sleep and my last cat because i was in transition of moving my parents took until you know i was going to get settled but he was old too, and then he just decided that he just didn't want to go on, and um, he got very sick. But not very sick, like just one day he just stopped coming out for food, and he was hiding a lot. And um, when I took him, it was said that, you know, he was severely diabetic, and I, you know, or might have been severely diabetic, but 
he had never showed any signs. He never lost teeth. He wasn't overly thirsty, but there was clearly, he, you know, became a stick and wasn't eating that much. And, you know, I tried everything I could. I even did the shots and then it was no quality of life. I was just keeping him alive for me. So I put him to sleep. So that is sad. I know that it's like so sad. Please don't be sad. I wasn't saying it for anyone to be sad. I was just saying how I got my cat was I was so sad after that happened because they literally all went within a year of each other, like a year and less than a year and a half. All three of these animals that I had for over a decade of my life went at the same time. And I always had an animal, always, always, always had an animal, um, I'm using just the same colors now. I'm just pulling them all in and then I'll go in with a skin tone. So if you do see me using things, it's all the same colors now. Uh, yeah, so I always had a pet. Now my husband, you know, he likes animals, but I have been told that I am a little too much with animals. I am crazy. I mean, one time I saw um, a little thing online that like a little, one of those jokey meme things that said, um, I would probably, uh, my last words would be here, kitty, kitty, um, trying to pet a lion. Like I would be, yeah, sorry, my camera cut off. I'm glad I caught that. Um, so yeah, I, I love all animals. So I always had an animal and my husband, you know, he had animals, but they were like either his sisters or his mother and, you know, like he never had his own and, he, you know, but he saw how much I really wanted an animal again. Um, so he was like, all right, I'm going to get you, you know, he, he, Someone in the family knew someone, so it was a family friend, that said they bred Maine Coons. And they showed, bred and showed Maine Coons. And they were, since they were family friend, they just had a litter. Or there was a, they had some younger cats. They didn't call it a litter. Um, so let me correct myself there. They had about three that she would, uh, that weren't taken from a litter, she said. And she would, you know, we can have them for 200 bucks. Have one. So he said, you know, let's go. You know, he, he wanted to keep it a secret, but she didn't want to give it to him. She wanted to meet me. And now I am not turning my nose up to that. I think that's very important when you're having someone adopt an animal or you breed them. You want to see, you want to get a feel for them so you can pick out the right animal with the right puppy my cousin breeds golden retriever so i know how that all goes um i get it but you know family friend and my husband wanted to surprise me but they, she was like no i want to meet her and blah 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 the whole thing so he told me this and i was like all right you know i'm like i appreciate you were going to do this su surprise me i'm like but you know what this is better she only has three left there may be one with a better personality you know for me or me for it then if you just go pick it out. So, you know, let's, let's go. Uh, let me see. And I actually didn't want a girl cat. I wanted a boy cat because the one girl cat I had that had asthma, she was very mean to me. She didn't like me, but I loved her to death. You know, obviously I did everything I could for that cat. Um, but I was like, you know, she's a second girl cat that I've ever had. And, um, I don't know. I just found the boys to be more affectionate. I was like, let's, and now this is only from my experience. I was like, let me, I want a boy. So he was like, all right. So we went and she said, you know, I have, there's two boys. And I think she said three, but she said she might've had another girl or something somewhere. Anyway, we get to the house and, you know, I'm still sad over my boy, Leo, who that was the last cat that passed. Um, I was very sad because I also felt like I was in transition of moving and I didn't really get to spend a lot of time with him. Um, and he was my cat and had I been around and not in two places, I may have picked up on things. And the vet said, no, that, that was not going to be the case. This cat just it had other issues as well. And, you know, whatever, not to blame myself. But anyway, I was still sad and bummed out about that. So we walk into the house and um, she had a lot of knickknacks. And this is an important part of the story. She had a lot of knickknacks all over the house. And I'm talking like... If you walked into an antique shop, not that they were antiques, but let's say you walked into an antique shop, there were tons of knickknacks everywhere. And uh, 
you didn't see no cats, right? There were no cats. So she said, oh, um, she's like, um, I have the two boys and you, wait, let me back up. So we sit down on the couch and I'm like, she has tons of knickknacks everywhere. And, uh, she's like, oh, you know, sit down, get comfortable. You know, uh, she was in the kitchen. She's like, I'll be right out. So she's like, you know, put, put your bag, you know, down, take your jacket off. So I go to put my pocketbook on the table and there were some knickknacks on the table. So I'm trying to position my pocketbook in between, in between the, um, the things. And I noticed that they're not moving. Like they're not moving. Like I, I went to move like a candlestick kind of thing out of the way, just to the little bits I could fit my purse. Cause it was like a dish and then the candlestick and a candlestick or whatever. And, and nothing was moving. And I thought I was losing my mind. I'm like, like this, nothing, this isn't moving. So I look at my husband because he, he sees my face and he's like, what? And I'm like, um, mind you, we weren't married yet. We were, we were just boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. But he's like, um, he's like, what? And I'm like, I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm like, I think it's stuck. <laughs> so he's like, all right. So anyway, the woman comes back out and now we hear growling. And I don't know if you have cats and you've ever heard them growl, like when they're mad or scared or whatever. And She's like, oh, there's the two boys, you know, they're fighting, they don't get along, they're on the steps. And then I look, cause she had like, so we're sitting on the couch and then in front of us was a staircase to go upstairs, which was partially, you could only see partially up and then the wall concealed the rest of going up the stairs. And then you do, you see like a tail, <laughs> like a fluffy tail, like on one of the steps. And she's like, yeah, they're not, they don't get along. She's like, you know, she said the name, I don't remember it, is on the top step and he's on the middle step and they're just, you know, they're fighting with each other. And I'm like, oh, that, that's not great. I'm like, that's a little odd. I'm like, you know, thinking like they're younger, they were in the same litter, they shouldn't be like that. But she never said that. This is just what I assumed from what she did calculatingly say so she's like why don't you go take a look so I go to look and then on the top top step is this huge Maine Coon now you know they're big if you don't know they're large large ginormous cats um even at a young age they could be like a young Maine Coon can look like a full-grown tabby cat um so I was like, oh, I'm like, this is interesting. I'm like, um, that cat's like really big. And she's like, yeah, she's like, that cat's name is, I forget. And then she's like, and the one on the step is Leo. And that was my cat that just passed name, Leo. So I was like, I, I can't even look at Leo. I can't take Leo. I can't, even though I was going to change the name, I was like, I just, I can't do that. And I didn't even think of it as a sign, to be honest with you. Actually, maybe it was a sign because I may have took one of those cats had it not been named Leo and then not have gotten my cat. Anyway, I look at the cats and they had, um, having cats, I know what uh, upper respiratory um, disease in cats looks like. And they look like they had just gotten over it, but not just gotten over it regularly, like just gotten over it to the point that they weren't very um, attended to while they had it. They both had like um, white fur patches under their, like their necks and their like chest were white. And one of them's chest fur was stained yellow, which meant that he had just got, he had pus coming out of his nose that probably dripped down his face onto his chest thing. That's how bad he probably had it. And their eyes were all gooked over and the other cat still had gook in his nose. And I know that is a lifelong ailment once they get that. And I was like, look, I can't, I just, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, you know, we'll think about it, you know, this and that. Like I wasn't making any commitment. And then my husband saw that I was like not into it. And he didn't understand why, because he didn't really ever have cats where he understood like sicknesses and illnesses, but he just saw that I was just put off by it. And then, um, as we were talking to her, like he bumped into a table with knickknacks and he's like, oh no. 
and nothing fell over. And she laughed and said, oh, you're not gonna, nothing's gonna fall over in this house. Everything's glued down. And we were like, what? And sure enough, every single knickknack, every single figurine, candlestick, candelabra, a uh, little dish where you would maybe put candy or mint was actually crazy glued down. And I said to her, I was like, why is that? Like, at first I didn't even ask. She, she, we, we sat back down and she's explaining, oh, everything's glued down. And I'm just like, oh, that's so weird. Why is everything glued down? Like, I couldn't understand it. And with that, this little cat, this little petite girl cat, six month old she had to be, comes running out of the kitchen runs up to us, grabs her toy stick that was under the coffee table, grabs a little furry end and runs away with it. And that was my cat. And I looked at her and I was like, who's that? And she was said the name of the cat. I can't remember what name she named it. And I was like, is that the other one? Is that one, one of them? And she's like, oh yeah, I just didn't mention it. Cause you know, you, he, he said he wanted a girl, a boy. And that's a girl. And I'm like, I don't know what it was. I just saw her for two seconds. And there was just something about her that tugged at my heart. And I was like, no, I, I, I'll take, I want her. Can, can I see her? So she grabbed her and she brought her out. And she was so scared. And she was, she was like, oh, yeah. She's like, um, she was tiny, right? So I thought she was under, like, I thought she was young. And she's like, yeah, this is blah, blah, blah. And, you know, she was this and that. And she's like, um, yeah, yeah, no, if you want her, you know, she's a little shy and this and that. And I'm like, no. And, you know, she, she was just like, okay. So it would shock me because I was kind of like, wait a minute, you wanted to see me. I thought you were going to make me do this whole process of whether or not you were going to give me a cat. And she, all I said was, oh, is she one of the ones up, you know, that I can take? And she was like, yeah, here you go. I just found it like just odd, but I was like, all right. <laughs> she's like, I have a carrier. I'll get it for you. She's like, oh, she's like, do you want to see its, its father? Do you want to see her father? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, mind you too. She had pictures on the walls of like she said, were magazine shoots of these beautiful Maine Coon. She's like, oh yeah, we did a photo shoot and you know, this, this cat did this, and this cat did this magazine, and this and that. And I'm like, oh, wow, so nice, you know. I mean, it was interesting. I wasn't being facetious. Anyway, to make a long story short, too late with that, but she opens up her basement door, and she's like, here, I'll show you the father. And she went a whistle or something like that, and it was like a TV show. 20 Maine Coon cats came running out of her basement. And when I say Maine Coons, I mean the full Maine Coon sized cats that you see on TV and on Instagram and all those things. Yeah, full size Maine Coon cats, 20 to 21 cats. I'm not lying because I stopped counting at 13 and there were more. That's why everything was nailed down. I mean, glued down. That's why this cat was shy. And she wasn't shy. She was scared. She was the smallest cat out of 21 cats who, by the way, were not. She was not a breeder. At that point, I was like, oh, no. No, no. She's a hoarder. She's hoarding cats. I was like, there is no way she's breeding them because, my, like I said, my cousin breeds my, um, golden retrievers. She has four girls, but they are not bred in her home. She goes to a special clinic with another breeder and they artificially breed these animals her cats were breeding so anyway i'm sure a bunch of you are like shaking your heads right now yeah so anyway that's how i got my cat i took her from a warder who i guess in her brain is a breeder and i had my cat three days and she came down with the upper respiratory that the other two cats had um, I was kind of hoping maybe she wouldn't have, um, but she did. She also wasn't three months old. She was a, she was six months old. She was a runt. So she was tiny as a full grown eight and a half year old Maine Coon now. Um, she is only nine and a half to 10 pounds and has always only been nine and a half to 10 pounds, 
which for a Maine Coon is very small. She has deformed nails um, on her paws. They grow flat and into her paw pads and I will not have them remove them because um, at the time I was living near um, a vet, a doctor who was able to able to trim them without any issues. I can't do it because of the deformity. Um, and then when I moved, people were having a harder time and suggested that, you know, even though declawing is outlawed um, in some states, it, medical necessity, but I said no. I said not at her age and not at this point. Let's just cut them the best we can. And if I have to come more frequently, I will. Um, every now and then I make a trip back to my old one, um, back in my old where I used to live before I had even moved in with my husband because um, t the vet tech there is amazing and she cuts them without incident. Um, yeah, so my cat came from a hoarder. She was probably interbred and she has a lot of health issues. She gets flare-ups of the upper respiratory um, all the time. And as she's getting older, she's getting more health concerns. She has arthritis, um, she has a uh, bum hip, um, she gets um, a lighter form of the upper respiratory where it turn just it's just conjunctivitis in one eye um, to which I have to treat and put drops in and if she gets upset or stressed or worked up she will get flare-ups um, if she gets depressed that happens so when I do take vacations um, she does get sick while I'm away so it's very hard for me to go away because I have to have some money who is aware of what's going on with her. Um, the last time I went away, I did um, have her receive an antibiotic shot just to prevent an infection from a flare-up because they can overcome some of those upper respiratory issues on their own with their immune system. But when her eye flares up, she does need drops. So it is kind of hard. And she does get depressed because her and I are very attached. So when I am not around, she does get sad, believe it or not. Um, but she is my princess, um, and I love her. And I'm, you know, that is how I got my cat. Um, so when I tell people she is a Maine Coon, everyone gets so excited. But you know, she is not your typical Maine Coon. So there's that story. Um, let's see what else. Um, I was asked how and when I like to do my when I color. Um, because like I said, I mentioned a few times I can't color at my desk or, you know, I didn't have a craft space or back when I lived in the apartment, I would color on my couch. And then when I moved, I was so excited to actually have a, uh, a like a craft room now. But um, when my favorite times of the day to color are going to be, um, it's going to be, I'm trying to think. Um, during the day, I do work from home. I am my position is hybrid. So I do work from home three days a week and I do have to go into the office two days a week. So when I do work from home, obviously I don't have a lot of time to color unless I'm off like today because um, I do have time off. I do take days sporadically because I'm not planning on like a vacation this year. So I'm just taking days sporadically. Um, so I do most of my coloring when I log off um, after I get settled in or I eat dinner, I'll sit in front of the TV and I'll have a coloring book on my lap um, as opposed to sitting on my desk and I'll be watching TV. Um, that's why I don't do a lot of video filmings because most of my colorings are when I'm sitting on my couch unwinding and relaxing. Um, yeah, I tend to do that a lot. Uh, I'm going to go with a little light yellow for that background. Um, that's when I do most of my coloring. So from any time from, I guess, 5 30 because I honestly I know it sounds weird I eat dinner early because um I just don't like eating late I like to eat my dinner and have any snacks like before seven um so I don't get any heartburn or um just because I try and like fast a little bit so I eat dinner pretty early um if I make myself something during the day um my husband will just eat when he's hungry later. You know, we always hang out together, whether we're watching TV or he's playing his game or I'm on the couch coloring. So we don't necessarily have to sit down to eat together at the same time because um, I wouldn't expect him to eat at the, you know, 4.30 in the, <laughs> it's like lunchtime for people. Um, but again, like I try and fast a little bit overnight just for health purposes. Um, 
So the earlier I have my last meal, the better for me. Um, yeah, so anytime from like 5.30 on, I enjoy like coloring and doing my crafty things. On the weekends, I like to run my errands in the day. Um, or I like to just go to like the local bookstore and walk around with a coffee and just browse books and magazines. Um, so on the weekends, um, I'll do my coloring whenever I feel like it. Like sometimes I do it in the morning with my cup of coffees on the couch. Sometimes I'll do it in the afternoon, sometimes at night, and sometimes on the weekends I don't even get to color. So that's when I enjoy doing colorings and coloring and all that kind of stuff. Um, when I do most of it anyway. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I was asked, um, you know, what uh, my favorite mediums are to use. So, like I said, uh, as I've been going on with my coloring journey, I'm coming more and more into different kinds of mediums. And I'm actually, um, you know, I've expanded what I use. So, um, my favorite colored pencil is going to be Prismacolor um, because honestly, that's the one, one of the first pencils I had. And I actually enjoyed working with them over um, the polychromos at the time. Remember, I said I had small, small set. It was like my first set. So, that was my first set of pencils. And through all the years of coloring, just like my two favorite books, I still like them the same as I did in the beginning. I'm gonna say my Prismacolor pencils are my favorite medium to use when using colored pencils. Um, I just have the most color combinations. I'm the most familiar, like I could look at this and I can tell you which Prismacolor pencil corresponds um, with it. And that's just cause I'm just from the most familiar with those pencils. Um, I like them the most. Um, so that is my favorite colored pencil medium to use. I do try other brands. I have started using um, Faber-Castell Al Albrecht Dewar's as a watercolor pencil. Um, I am trying to use uh, some other like budget brands more often because I find sometimes they work very well with um, Amazon paper. And for non-pencil, I am loving my Ohuhu alcohol markers. So as far as alcohol markers go, my favorite alcohol marker is going to be Ohuhu. And I know there's other ones out there, but you know, I did invest a lot of my money, even though they are somewhat affordable, in purchasing the Ohuhu um, brush tip set and purchasing the fi fine tip. Okay, I'm lying. I got the fine tip this brand I'm using as a gift. But someone, my husband, did buy it for me. So, you know, I did invest a lot in getting these. So these are the markers that I have and these are the markers that I use. And even though I have a gazillion colored pencils, I only have the Ohuhu's as alcohol markers. I do have Tombow's. Um, I don't enjoy using them. Um, I think I need to learn how to use them a little bit better and then maybe I might enjoy them more. Um, so when I do want to do a marker, I just tend to pull out my oh hoo -hoo, sorry i think someone's knocking on my door hang on guys okay yes it was my chewy delivery my cat just got some snack food <laughs> okay um yeah so i just use markers so prismacolor favorite medium for colored pencil markers favorite medium is going to be my oh hoo -hoo markers favorite medium aside from markers or um, pencil. I'm enjoying playing with watercolor paints now. I've been doing some watercolor paints in my uh, Mythomorphia book and um, I've been using the Neocolor 2 water soluble on uh, one or two pages I did in one of my Hannah Carlson books. So I'm gonna say I, I'm enjoying those right now. Now which one of those two are my favorite? I can't say because I'm using them in the same manner. And I haven't found one that I'm enjoying more than the other because I'm still kind of new at the watercolor backgrounds and the Neocolor 2 backgrounds because I don't use them frequently. So right now, other than these guys, um, pencils, markers, stuff like that, 
Um, I'm enjoying Neo Color 2s and I have the Gansey Tamby watercolor paints. So I've been using those. So out of those, I can't really say um, which one is my favorite yet, but I am leaning towards, I'm leaning towards the watercolor paints, to be honest. I just feel like I have more control over them than I have over the um, the Neo Color 2s. Um, maybe I need to practice a little more with my Neo Color 2s, but when I use my watercolor paints, I use them thick unless I want them to spread. Um, then I make them watery. So I feel when I use them thicker, I have more control of how to blend them, how I'm blending sometimes darker and then I can put some light into it and I can drag the dark. Where the Neo colors, I feel like, I don't know. I, I, I'm just not there yet with it. So I'm more into the watercolor paints. I'm just trying to pick out a pink for the piggy bank, um, which isn't in the color scheme, but I'm just going to make it a light pink. And then I'll do the cup that color as well. I'm just trying to find one that I like that's not like pink pink. I see I have a pinkish vanilla. And then I'm going to do her cream color. Okay, so to find pinkish vanilla. Okay, so I found that pretty quick. Just do this. Um, as far as other mediums go, I love my jelly rolls, um, but for white, uh, white gel pens, I enjoy the Sakura jelly roll number 10. The white number 10 I find is, works best for me as far as me adding like white gel pen accents and highlights or the white Uniball Signo, which is my favorite, favorite. Um, I have a ton of those as well. So it's either the white jelly roll number 10, I guess that has to do with the size maybe of the point. I don't, I'm not a hundred percent, but that's the one I love the most. That's the one I find works best. Uh, I'm going to leave a little white there. I might make it like a highlight with my white jelly roll. Um, white. And then I do like the Sakura glaze, the black. I do have the glazes in quite a few colors and I enjoy the clear because you can use it to make like a less of an, of a, like rather than using gl glossy accents, the white glaze kind of gives you a nice effect for eyes and for eyes or something like, like if you have a gem or something rather than using the Sakura, I'm sorry, using the glossy accents. I find that works quite well. I'm trying to think what else. Oops, oops, make, I'm making a mess. Um. What else do I use? So I'm gonna color these ices. I'm gonna use this like lightish green. I know it looks like dirty ice cubes, but that's okay because I'll go over them with the white gel pen and then it'll just kind of look more like ice. Um, and maybe this, no, I know what I'm gonna do with that. Okay, uh, what else? What other mediums do I use? That's really it. Um, I do have acrylic paint pens and I do enjoy the Ohuhu brand um, acrylic paint pens. I do like brush tip, but I find that obviously brush tip, they have a different look and a different way of having your page turn out than your regular fine point. So when I use acrylic paint pens, I use the thin point, the finest point. Um, and I do like the Ohuhu or the um, Truly Arts, even though I find they clog up a lot on me. Um, those are two of my favorite um, paint pens. As far as brush tips go, um, Truly Art does have brush tips, but again, they're like all the other brush tip um, acrylic paint pens out there. They do give your page a different look. So if you are trying to do little highlights, um, more controlled highlights, you wanna go with probably the fine point, as opposed, the brush is good for getting rid of like, lot, like if I wanted to get rid of all the black lines, the brush, if it's opaque enough, depending on the brand, is better for that. Whereas your little highlights and accents, it's better with the fine tip. And those are my favorite mediums. Those are really, those are really all that I use. Um, trying to find a color for her skin now that I want to use. Um, I'm gonna just go in with a cream color if I can find it, and then just go over her skin with some pencils. I'm not gonna do a background just yet, um, and I might not even do a background. So. 
I'm trying to think what other questions. So when I list these questions, because um, I know I said I would love to hear from you, I've kind of been all over the place. So I'll just take the questions that I've answered that people have asked me and that I went on long-winded with, and I'll just narrow them down. And then, you know, you guys, if you want to answer them, please do. Um, if not, thank you for watching me answer them. Um, and thanks, everyone, for asking them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Hiccup. I'm trying to look for this cream color for her skin. Um... All right, I found my cream color. Actually, I just, the weird color, I made the ice cubes. I'm gonna make the straw. Okay. And now, we'll do her skin. I'm trying to think. Favorite coloring books, favorite medium. Got my cat, where I live. Favorite times of color. Ah. Uh, I know that when I had, um, was asked, like, you know, when my favorite time to color is, and I said, you know, I like to color when I watch TV, people did ask, oh, are you watching anything good? Because, you know, so many people like to binge watch TV series. You know, do I have a favorite TV show? Actually, to be honest, I'm not a big, so as far as TV goes, like, um, regular TV, I'm not a big TV fan. I don't have a lot of TV shows, um, that I, that I watch. I'm more of a, if something interests me, I'll wait till the whole season is finished and then I will find it on a streaming channel and I will binge watch it as opposed to watching it every week. Um, I don't like that. I hate waiting. So I'd rather, rather than wait because then, you know, sometimes life is busy and you miss an episode. I mean, and then you have to wait two days for it to stream and then, I don't know. I just rather, it's too much pressure. I just rather when the series is over, just binge watch the entire series. I mean, that problem with that is then you hear about things that happen, especially if it's a popular show. The only show that I will not wait and that I do watch um, is Outlander. That I will watch as it's aired um, because I do love Outlander so much. I love that, that show. So that I will watch as it's aired. And, you know, usually I try and make myself available to watch it. And if I am out when it on the days it's on, I try to catch it. Um, like later on that night, like I'll stay up to watch it if, it, if there's, if it's on another, again at another time. Or I watch it a second it becomes available. Yeah, so that's like a big one for me. Um, what else? Um... I was big on Game of Thrones. Um, I have not watched House of the Dragon yet. I started watching it when it first came out and I decided that I wanted to wait until it was all out to binge watch it and then I never got to and I know the second season's coming out and everyone I know who likes it tells me that I need to watch the first season but you know, I might watch the first season once the second season is halfway through that way I can binge the first, and then by the time I'm finished watching the first, the second, you know, will be out and I can catch it. Because I do have all the streaming channels. I actually don't have cable. I have streaming channels instead. Um, cable is way too expensive in my area, and I'm just not a fan of how they work it, you know, what they charge you for what they offer. Um, I'd rather just pay the same in streaming channels and have a little bit of everything. It's not like I'm trying to beat the price I'm probably paying as much with all the streaming channels I have but I kind of feel like I'm getting more for my money that way you know I was paying a lot of money for cable and extra boxes and I still had to pick which channels I wanted as a basic plan and I literally didn't get any more than those channels and I kind of thought that was like a ripoff I could pay the same amount and have eight streaming channels and have access to everything so that's the way I went but to each their own, you know, like I said, I don't have a favorite TV show. I'm more about movies. I like to watch Netflix. Sometimes they'll have the original movies. I'll watch those. Um, favorite TV shows that are not on, you know, that you can just stream. I do love Friends. I've always loved Friends. Um, you either love Friends or you hate Friends. Same thing with Seinfeld. You either love Seinfeld or you hate Seinfeld. I kind of love it. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, Friends is a 10 for me. I've always loved it. Seinfeld is like a 7. Um, I love it, but not as much as some people love it. Um, Game of Thrones, I like. The, that was a favorite show. I love Outlander. That's on now. I just started watching Orange is the New Black, which has been off the air for a while, but I never watched it. 
seven seasons and I am enjoying that. I have like four episodes left and then I am done with seven seasons. That's what I've been doing. Coloring, watching, that. That's been my focal point for the past month. Watch a couple episodes a night. Uh, you know, day, a couple episodes in the morning before work because I'm up like a couple hours before I have to work. I'll watch one episode. Then I'll, on my break, I'll watch an episode. I'll watch an episode at night, one or two episodes, weekend. You know, just trying to take it off. Just have to figure out what color I want to do the cup now. I'll do it light green. Um, so though that's really what I watch when I color. Those are my favorite shows. And my favorite movies. Um, old school movie, and I'm more of a movie person. I like I said, I just like to watch movies I've seen a thousand times, and I have a weird variety of movies. Um, most of them are movies that came out in the '90s. Um, which my husband laughs at me. He's like, "Those are old," and I'm like. Stop talking because <laughs> he's a little younger than I am. And again, he wasn't into like the movies like I was like growing up. So I do like a lot of movies that, you know, he's never even heard of. And I'm just like, he's like, that's old movie. I'm like, you need to stop. <laughs> I'm like, because I, I don't want to hear that negativity. <laughs> so yeah, um, I do want to go in with like, Maybe a light holly. And just kind of for the glass effect, because then I'll go over that. Um, I was asked a couple of times because I live in New York, you know, do I believe it or not, someone asked me like, you know, oh, do you do you own a car? Because I guess New York people think, oh, transportation. But I'm actually not in Manhattan, New York, or um in, Manhattan, in the city, so um, I do have a car because like now I'm kind of outside the city, um, but still in the tri-state area. So uh, yeah, I need a car now. When I lived in Brooklyn, I still had a car. I will always have a car. Um, not every place has public transportation, you know, where I I am that is readily available, um, and. I don't particularly care for public transportation, to be honest with you. So I do enjoy my car. I do enjoy going different places when I am off from work or, you know, around. Like, I, so I've always had a car. So, yes, I actually do have a car. I do lease my car. Um, and we own a car. Um, uh, we have one where my husband just uses it to go back and forth to work with. Where we don't have to worry about miles and stuff like that. And then I have a car um because we need two cars so now i'm just going over everything with pencil um just lining up some things i'll go in with my uh my marker i'm uh, my marker my uh white pen after um my cat she is eyeing me right now so there is a possibility she may come over i'm just gonna go in with my white pencil i mean my sky blue light and now what I'm basically going to do is I'm basically going to just go over everything that I did with pencil and add some, uh, everything I did with my marker and add some pencil just to highlight it up. And at the end of the video, I will show you guys the finished product. It's not going to look much different. I really just wanted this to be more of a simple coloring. So I'm not going crazy with everything as far as everything goes, like, you know, adding color and whatnot. I'm not going in for a full shade effect or anything like that just want to give it some aspects of interest here and there just certain parts maybe inside the lemon a little bit um not even here to be honest maybe here Here. If I can draw, I would draw a lemon here. So you know that this was a sack of lemons, but I can't, so I'm not going to. I got some green there, so I'm just gonna shade in that a little bit like that. Then I'm gonna grab a green. Uh, maybe my, and these light parts. 
it's here like that. I'm just gonna kind of. If I was trying to make the lighter part, but maybe I didn't have a good transition with my markers, I'm just gonna go in with my lighter pencil. Uh, yeah, like that. This, like this, and like that. All right, and I think that's really all I'm gonna do. Um, I can give her, I can just go in and maybe just shade her skin a little bit. I'm not, oh, I don't enjoy doing skin tones all that much, to be honest, I'm not good at it. But I'm gonna take a very similar color pencil and just maybe peer a little here, here, before I cat she keeps getting closer and closer she's sitting and she's every two i look she's like a step closer but still sitting like i see her moving out of the corner of my eye but every time i look at her she's still sitting a typical cat uh creeping i call it creeper i'm gonna get a little bit of pink i'm gonna use my deco pink just gonna give her a little bit of blush on her cheeks like that Usually, I, sometimes if I had my black, I can give her a little bit more of a nose. Nah, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to, usually with the Hannah Lynn's, I try and give them a little bit more of a nose. I'm not going to do that with her. I'm going to go in though with my nectar actually and just make up here a little darker. Um, here like this, maybe here like this a little bit. This. Okay. All right. Kind of really smooth out a little bit, whatever. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So, do I want to do anything with her hair? I mean, I could just. No, that pencil. Like, the one thing I do like about the Prismacolor pencils is that you can actually get like ones that pop off of the page as far as like it goes with the marker now i'm going in with like an oranger orangier color and i'm gonna add some shading as opposed to some highlighting with it like a lighter pencil i'm going in with like a mid-tone kind of pencil and so i outlined um her hair with a darker ohuhu marker and then my mid-tone will be this pencil, and then the light will be the lightest color of the marker. And I just do a little bit like this. Sorry if my hand's in the way. Um, try maybe up here a little bit. So I think I pretty much answered a lot of the major questions that take like a lot to explain that I've, you know, communicated with people in conversation here and there. Um, usually these questions always came about when I would post a picture or when I did a video or, you know, someone had a question on something I was using or when I was moving. I spoke a lot about how that move was a disaster. I'm not going to go into that now because I am almost done with this um, page. Um, but that did stem for a lot of other questions. So, you know. Yeah, so I think I answered like some of the main questions that kept me occupied talking a little bit. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the color portion of it. Um, like I said, it was nothing fancy, just a little, you guys can get to know me a little bit. Because there are a lot of people who don't message, you know, who haven't asked me questions. Um, again, I am very horrible when it comes to answering my Instagrams. Um, so if anyone does message me, I probably will not get back to you for weeks. Only because I, I put, when I post something, I'm just posting it, uploading it. I'm not really scrolling around Instagram. Um, so I do apologize for that. But, you know, if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I can always do another video and answer a couple more questions for you guys.
um, that would always be good. If I did do a color along, it would probably be something like this because it's easier for me to hang out with you guys and do. All right, so, so let me just add my little white gel pen. All right, everybody, I just added some white gel pen. Um, and this is the one I was talking about, the Jelly Roll so um, 10. That's the card, Jelly Roll 10. Oh, wait, you can't see it. Hang on. Let me focus that for you. Yeah. And I just, oh, sorry for the shake. I just added some white here and there. Um, and that's it. This is just really more for a simple coloring. I had a sheet behind here for the alcohol to pick up the alcohol markers. And that is pretty much it. I just want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today, listening to my color and chat. Um, I will list the question in the description box in a more organized format and less, um, you know, easier than the way I answer them. Should anybody want to answer some questions, um, you know, in their own videos, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. Again, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you have any questions about anything I used, um, just ask uh, listed in the comments and I will try and put all the colors for the Yohuhu markers that I use along with the Color Q palette in the description box as well. Please stay well and I shall talk to you guys soon. Bye.